Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another episode review video for last night's episode of The Walking Dead. This was season 8 episode 14 entitled Still Gotta Mean Something. Okay, so this episode in total was actually a really, really good episode. I Entitled really to the all-out all out war storyline, not so much. Like It didn't really progress anything in that sense. Uh, it was kind of like internal moral struggles within like our core group essentially. Like we had... Uh, we, we had Carol, you know, struggling with her ability to want to want to find the kid, right? And that leading back to Sophia, actually, as well. And um, it kind of felt kind of the same for her, you know, because um, the kid went missing as well as Sophia. And, you know, we all know that Sophia didn't make it and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Carol was basically thinking that this kid wasn't going to make it. He wasn't going to survive either. And um, so that was an internal struggle right there with Carol. Uh, and then, of course, we have Rick um, not necessarily wanting to read Carl's note and, uh, you know, kind of just getting out of there constantly, just running away from it, if you will. And uh, and then we had Morgan. <laughs> and then we had Morgan just going completely batshit crazy pretty well the entire episode. And uh, it, it was definitely fun. It was definitely fun. Uh, and then the start of the synopsis was a heaps prisoner makes the discovery we told you. Uh, or I told you back on Thursday in my prediction video that I thought that it was probably going to be Negan, uh, that he's making discovery about what happened to Jadis's people, that being they're all dead, and uh, there, there was there was a struggle there as well. Um, so pretty pretty well. Uh, Carol didn't necessarily want to go after the kid. She ended up going after the kid and ended up actually finding him, um, hiding basically. Kind of like Sophia did, to be honest with you. Like, when Rick left her, kind of like Sophia did. And she uh, seen him basically hiding there uh, from walkers. Walkers were trying to attack him. And uh, Carol got there basically last second at night and saved him. And, uh, you know, that that's all good. All right. And then, of course, we had uh, Negan, you know, uh, in a struggle with Jadis trying to survive. Uh, she had him tied up uh, basically to a board on wheels and... Um, threatened to basically put this 90 degree kind of like bent walker thing I don't, I don't know like roll it towards him and stuff and was threatening him with that um Negan ended up getting out of it essentially by threatening to destroy the rest of her pictures um that she had that that's all that she had left of her entire group essentially so she he kind of played into um her weaknesses I guess if you will um, and he, she kind of played into his, basically threatening to burn Lucille. And we get to find out about Lucille as well. You know, obviously that being Negan's wife. Um, and he named her after Negan's wife. Obviously he named him after his, he named the bat after his wife. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, so yeah, we get to find out about that. I mean, we already knew about it from the comics and stuff, but if you didn't read the comics, then I mean, that's, uh, that's brand new to you, right? Um, so yeah, man, I, I don't know. I think it was a solid episode across the board. We got, like I said, we got to, we got to see a lot of stuff there with Negan and, uh, that, it was definitely interesting. It was, it was kind of like a different look into Negan. You know what I mean? Like we always see him as this badass, you know, we, we always see him as this, uh, horrible person and stuff like that, but he's really not, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't, he didn't want to kill Jadis's whole group. You know, that was not him, you know? Uh, like he exclaimed, that was somebody um, not following the plan, not, not not following the procedure, if you will. And, uh, and anyways, he, he ended up getting out of there. They ended up kind of not necessarily making friends, but going on their own way because I think she started to believe that he actually had nothing to do with it. And he also told her that he, would get, he was going to make it right. And uh, I, we got to think that has something to do with Simon, right? So... I'm uh, I'm definitely interested there. Um, on the way back to the sanctuary, uh, Negan ended up picking up a uh, so a stranger. We don't know who it is because we didn't actually see it. Uh, like we didn't actually see who he picked up. And then when he got back to the sanctuary, we didn't also see that person. So maybe they hid in the trunk or something like that. I don't know. Um, but he opened the door for whoever it was and said, "Damn, you look like shit. Get in." And that's all we that's all we've seen. So we don't know who it is. Um. I kind of have a theory that it could be, uh, and I don't know her name, I apologize for it, but the girl that knows basically that Dwight is a traitor, the girl that got away, that ran through the forest when uh, Dwight started shooting all the saviors, 
essentially. So I'm thinking it might be her. I mean, that would kind of make sense a little bit because we haven't actually heard from her. We don't know where she's been or anything like that. Uh, we don't know if she died, you know. Um, we got to think we got to find out sometime, right? And uh, it could very well be her right there. Uh, it could be someone else as well. I, d I don't know who, you know, I don't, I don't really have any ideas or anything like that. Uh, also at the junkyard, we got to see the helicopter again. Uh, I don't know if that has anything relate to do with like related to Georgie or anything like that that we've seen with the hilltop. I don't know what the helicopter could mean at this moment. Honestly, I genuinely don't. Uh, I haven't read super far ahead in the comic books right now either. Like uh, I'm not to that. Um, I'm not to the Georgie storyline even yet. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm kind of in the middle of the whispers at the moment. Um, just because I follow I, I follow the volumes of The Walking Dead uh, for the comic book. And I just, yeah, I, I don't, I don't go with the issues. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what the helicopter significance could be. Uh, plus, you know, if it actually has anything to do with the comic books, it should come way later on, unless they're going to be skipping maybe the Whisper storyline. I don't know. I hope they don't. This is definitely interesting. But Carl is also a big part of the Whisper storyline. So if they do end up skipping it in the TV show, then, you know, you kind of know why. Um... So yeah, man, I'm 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 interested, man, because we get to we get to see the uh, the helicopter basically fly pretty damn close to them uh, when Negan and Jadis were struggling with each other, uh, and Jadis tried to get the attention of the helicopter, and Negan basically just said, "What the shit?" Like he's never seen it before, right? But we've seen it before. Uh, Rick has seen it before, you know, last season when they were in the junkyard and he was trying to prove his. Uh, ability, I guess, to Jadis by fighting on uh, Wilson. Was it Wilson? I don't know if it was Wilson. What was the walker's name? I don't know. Okay. Uh, it starts with a W. I know that. I don't know if it's Wilson or... Yeah. Anyways. Um, Rick and Morgan. Okay, so Rick and Morgan. Morgan originally went out with Carol to find the kid. He ended up separating off from her, basically saying that he didn't want to even try to find the kid anymore because he's probably dead. And uh, instead, he wanted to go hunt down the saviors that essentially, not necessarily killed him, but allowed him be, to be chased off by the walkers, right? So the, the saviors that escaped the hilltop, uh, not the ones that stayed, the, stayed behind, you know, they stayed behind. They want to be a part of the group now, which is fine. Everybody's, everybody seems to be cool with it, which is, which is definitely nice. Um, Rick and, yeah, so, so Morgan went off his own, try to find the saviors, and that's basically what, what Rick did as well. He, uh, he wanted to go out there and try to end it and, uh, you know, find them. Uh, so he did that, you know, he's kind of running away from his problems with reading Carl's note and stuff like that, and we'll get back into that later. But Rick and Morgan essentially meet up in the forest, uh, Morgan almost attacks Rick, and then Rick basically says, Morgan, you know me, kind of leading back to, like, season three and stuff like that, because Morgan's just, again, not right at the moment. And, uh, Morgan actually realizes that, and, uh, they ended up going on their own to, uh, Rick and Morgan kind of team up. This is where we kind of see it in the promo. They kind of team up to take down the, uh, the rest of the saviors. So, they ended up, uh, you know, getting to a place, and they ended up getting attacked, uh, and both knocked out and tied up and stuff like that in another, uh, kind of, I don't want to, I don't know if it was like a, a store, some, some sort of a, some sort of a warehouse, if you will, uh, where they got tied up. And, uh, the saviors were all there trying to deal with their own people being bit and stuff like that too. Like one guy was bit in the leg. They actually chopped off his leg and stuff like that. Uh, not on camera, but definitely off screen. And, uh, they did, basically didn't want to carry them. You know, they, they were going to bring down the weight of the group. You know, you know, they were, they were just more, more a hassle than anything. They were going to get them killed and stuff like that. So, um, they were basically going to leave them behind. And Rick suggested that, you know, we can get them to the Hilltops doctor if we go right now. Uh, you guys made a decision last night. It was a bad decision. And, um, you know, if you come with us now, if you release us, we can we can get to the hilltop. We can get your people some help instead of, you know, ending up killing them and then having to leave them and stuff like that. And, I mean, there was, was one asshole savior, you know. The long-haired guy that killed Ben. I, I can't remember his name. I genuinely can't. Uh, I, I, I pretty well hate him that much. That I just I don't give him the time of day to remember his name. And, um, anyways, they ended up, the rest of the saviors ended up going against this long-haired guy um, and basically saying, yeah, let's get to the hilltop. Let's join your group. And there was a herd of walkers coming at the same time. So they ended up releasing Rick and Morgan, and they ended up fighting alongside each other. 
uh, with walkers. And actually, one one savior actually ended up saving Rick's life one time with a you know covering him from a walker. So that was nice. Uh, but then basically right afterwards, uh, right after they dealt with the m- m- majority of the walkers, Rick and Morgan basically turned on the saviors uh, with Rick, like, basically plunging his axe into the side of the guy's neck that actually ended up saving his life prior, um, which I don't necessarily agree with. You know, this is kind of, I know, I know they're saviors and stuff like that, uh, but it was... Not necessarily the coolest thing to do to, like, lead them in, you know, try to get them to become a part of your group. They ended up biting, turning on one of their own people. Um, One guy actually ended up saving Rick's life, like I said. He probably, I mean, I don't know if it was saving Rick's life. Rick definitely would have survived either way. I think he would have dealt with the walker, but, you know, he kind of got his back. And um, Rick essentially turned around and just put an axe into the back of his head. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I, I was kind of mixed right there, you know, because on one hand, they are saviors, you know, they are bad people, stuff like that. But on the other hand, most of them are bad people. Some of them are good people. Some of them are just workers. Some of them are just people just trying to get by. And uh, I think that's kind of what those saviors were, people just trying to get by, except for that one long-haired asshole, which ended up dying, thankfully, uh, at the hands of Morgan and some walkers uh down in, I don't even know what, what you would call it, like a cellar area or something? I don't know. It kind of looked like train tracks as well. I gen- I genuinely don't even recognize the, the place that they were really at. But anyways, he ended up getting eaten alive uh, by Morgan basically caging him in with walkers, which was nice to see because uh, no one liked that guy. No one did. And uh, anyways, they ended up getting home uh, back to the hilltop uh, right after Carol I uh, got get home with the kid and uh Morgan basically came up to the kid basically saying I got the kid that I I got the guy that killed your brother I killed him and uh you know that was said um and then afterwards the episode ended essentially um at nighttime at the hilltop with Rick kind of you know getting changed you know getting all cleaned up and stuff like that and by the way the jacket made a return the actual like Rick season 4 uh you know fur collar brown jacket that he got, uh, he, he got from the, uh, like Joe, Joe and that, that, that whole group. Um, so that was nice to see that jacket come back. You know, that's always a a pretty, a pretty comic, um, centric jacket, if you will. That's always, that's always been a staple of Rick. And, uh, I'm glad that made a return because we actually haven't seen him wear it in a while. So I'm glad it made a return. Like I said, that was the jacket that, you know, Rick wore when he tore out Joe, Joe's throat, and that was the jacket that he wore when he became season five crazy Rick, just, you know, just absolutely killing everything and everybody that he's seen, and uh, it's just, it's just a badass jacket, man, it has a lot of history with Rick, so I'm glad it made, I'm, I'm glad it made a return here, I'm glad it did, it, uh, it always seems to be on him when he's in a, a situation that he has to fight out of, essentially, and that was today, or last night, rather, being with uh, the the saviors trying to take him captive and take him back to Negan. Um, So yeah, the episode ended with him getting changed uh, in his room, and Michonne came in, you know, they said they'd love him and stuff like that, and uh, then he basically took Carl's note out of the the dresser drawer, sat back on the bed, and then we actually had a really nice shot uh, for the camera, uh, zooming in on Rick uh, in the mirror, so it was a mirrored shot. Uh, of him starting to read the note. So uh, I, I'm pretty excited to see what it says. I know that we get to see what it says in the next episode, basically in the beginning moments, because they've already been revealed, like the beginning minutes of the episode for next week's episode, season eight, episode 15, have already been revealed. They're already online, so you could guys can check them out as well. Uh, but we'll go over that more in detail, obviously, uh, this Thursday on my prediction video for next week's episode of The Walking Dead. It'll be season eight, episode 15, entitled Worth. So I'm, I'm pretty excited, man. I'm pretty excited for it. We only have two episodes left, guys. Episode 15 and 16, guys. The uh, the finale's upon us, and you got to imagine that the all-out war is coming to an end here, guys, because they've they've stretched it. They've stretched it pretty far, and uh, we've got to be we've got to be close. You know, I, I don't see I don't see all-out war running into season nine. So I'm thinking these last two episodes are going to be pretty intense and pretty insane. So I cannot wait, guys. I really can't. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Um, if you guys like this episode, let me know in the comment section below. I loved it. I thought it was a great, uh, you know, kind of 
group centric episode. There wasn't really much focus on the saviors or anything like that. Like I said, there was with Negan. Um, and we got to see a, a better side of Negan, if you will, uh, a more emotional side. And, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see more of that. And I'm pretty excited for next week's episode of The Walking Dead, guys. Like I said, all that war is upon us now. And, uh, I'm thinking we're going to see some pretty, pretty crazy episodes. So thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you guys on the next one. And I was always make sure you guys check out my Twitch channel if you guys want to. If you guys are into video games, I stream there every single day. Monday to Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern and Saturday and Sunday I stream there at 12 p.m. Eastern. Man. Oh, excuse me. Holy shit. 12 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you check that out. Twitch.tv slash Element Frost. And uh, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody.